Okay guys, in this particular example, we're dealing with a bearing and vector application problem. So let's go ahead and read it and then we'll talk about how we're gonna set it up. It says a ship traveled 75 miles from port A with a bearing of 120 degrees. It then traveled 120 miles to port C with a bearing of 220 degrees. What is the distance from port A to port C? So in this particular problem, it's a bit different than the ones we were doing in the past. So if you remember the direction problems that we were doing, our direction was given with two cardinal points. So for example, on a compass, right, we have the following. We have north, east, south, and west. And typically, right, in the last problems we were doing, the direction they gave us would look the following way. We could have something like north, and then we would have 35 degrees east. And this was telling us to go from north to east, and our angle of rotation would be 35 degrees. So for example, to put that direction on, we would create our grid, right? Going north to east, we would have an angle of rotation of 35 degrees, right? That's how we were putting on the direction. However, in this particular problem, notice that we aren't given any of the cardinal points. We're just given the bearing, both here and here. So we have 120 degrees and 220 degrees. So let's talk about that when you're just given the bearing and you're not given any of the cardinal points, meaning north, east, south, or west. So let's erase this. So let's say I had a bearing here of 200 and 20 degrees. So you're going to go ahead and create your grid. And when putting this on, you're gonna have the following, right? You always start north. So when you're dealing with bearing and you're not given any of the cardinal points, you're gonna start north, okay? And you're gonna go in the clockwise direction. So you're going in this direction here, right? And notice what happens. If we have a bearing of 220 degrees, right? Well, where does that put us? So starting north, going clockwise, that's going to put us in the third quadrant, right? And then you would go ahead and draw your vector. So you got something like this, right? So that would be a bearing of 220 degrees. All right, so that's how we're gonna put on the direction in this particular problem. So let's erase this, and let's go ahead and set this up. So whenever dealing with these vector problems, our first step is to create a coordinate grid. So that's what we're gonna do here. So we're just creating our coordinate grid. And then what does it say? It says, a ship traveled 75 miles from port A with a bearing of 120 degrees. So we need to put that bearing on. So we start north, okay? And we know that we're gonna end up in the second quadrant, okay? So this is going to be 120 degrees. And now we can go ahead and draw our vector. So we're going to have something that looks like this, okay? Our next step is to draw our second coordinate grid. So we're going to draw it here at the tip of our vector. And notice what happens here. Notice how the tip of our vector will naturally fall in the second quadrant of our second coordinate grid, okay? So let's continue to read. It says it then traveled 120 miles to port C with a bearing of 220 degrees. So let's put that bearing on. So again, starting north, you're going to do 220 degrees. So here we are, 220 degrees, right? And again, that's gonna put us in the third quadrant. So drawing our second vector, we're gonna have something that looks like this. Okay, so let's put that on. We have 220 degrees here. And at this point, we can go ahead and label. So we know that this is going to be 75 miles. And this here is going to be 120 miles. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, right, is essentially Okay, we're gonna use the law of cosines to solve this problem. So, what we need to do is we need to find this angle in here. Okay, so we need to find this angle in here. 
And we're going to do that first, and then we'll go ahead and draw our resultant vector on. Okay, so let's find this angle in here first. So how would I find this angle in here? Well, what do we know? We know that this angle up here is 120 degrees, going from here to here. So how can I find this angle? Well, we know that this angle plus this angle will be 180. So if I simply just do 180 minus 120, that's going to give me the angle in here, which in this case is going to be 60 degrees. So what I can do, I'll just put 60 degrees here. And if this is 60 degrees, then that means that this angle right here must also be 60 degrees. Okay? And now you can see kind of how this is going to work out. We know that one revolution, right, is going to be 360 degrees. So in order to get this angle in here, we're simply just going to take 360 minus 220 minus 60, and that will give us our angle in there. When you do that, you're going to get 80 degrees. So this in here is going to be 80 degrees, right? So let's go ahead and draw in our resultant vector. So we put it on by starting from our starting point and then connecting it to the tip of our last vector. So we have something that's going to look like this. Okay, and essentially this is what we're trying to find here. We're trying to find this distance. So let's go ahead and label our triangle. Okay, we'll call this A. So the A, we'll call this B, and this will be C, right? So again, we're trying to find the distance from port A to port C, okay? So again, this is going to be a law of cosine problem because we have side, angle, side, and we can use the law of cosines to solve that. So essentially, right, you're trying to solve for side B because again, opposite to angle B, that's going to be side B, all right? So again, we're trying to solve for side B and we're going to use the law of cosines, and that's going to look the following way. We're going to have b squared equal to a squared plus c squared minus 2 times a times c, and then cosine of angle b. Okay, so all we have to do at this point is go ahead and fill in our values, so we get b squared equal to, so side A, well that's going to be opposite to angle A, so that's going to be 120. So 120 squared plus side C, again opposite to angle C, that's side C, 75 squared, right, minus, here we're going to get 2, times side A, which is 120, times side C, which is going to be 75, and then cosine of angle B, which we determined was going to be 80 degrees. Okay, so all we have to do is plug this into our calculator and solve, right? So let's find out what B squared equals. So plugging it into our calculator, we get the following. We get 120 squared plus 75 squared minus 2 times 120 times 75 times cosine of 80 degrees. Okay, and we get the following here. We're going to get 16,899, and we'll say 0.33. Now our last step is to take the square root on both sides, so let's go ahead and do that. So we take the square root of our answer, and we get the following. B is going to be equal to, and we'll say, 129.997 miles. So if we go ahead and just round this, we can say that B is about 130 miles. Okay, so this is going to be your final answer. So the distance from port A to port C is going to be about 130 miles. Okay, and that is it.